going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of The Jump. Just wanted to hop on here real quick. Uh, super busy time for me. A lot of traveling, including just getting back moments ago from Atlanta uh, to watch the Champions Classic. Um, obviously, this is the, the big thing. For those of you all that have watched over a few episodes or, or whatever, you know I'm not super biased on this channel. And I, I kind of look at everything through an unbiased lens. I don't... I don't always side with my Kentucky Wildcats, but right now the talk of college basketball is Mark Pope and the Kentucky Wildcats knocking off Duke. So that's going to be the main thing on this episode. This is a college basketball, college football episode. Uh, as always, we're talking college sports, but that's going to be a big chunk of this. So if you're here for a reaction type of thing, then welcome in and uh, we'll get straight into that. We'll start out with... Kansas and Michigan State. So this is the first game. First game is kind of always a snoozer, it feels like. Um, Jayhawks win 77-69. I get, they might drop in the rankings even with a win. Um, I'm not always a fan of dropping teams even if, when they win, but um, I could see them maybe moving UConn up to one and then Bama moved to three and Kansas moved to two, something like that. But they'll probably end up keeping it the same if we're being honest. So uh, that'll probably end up sh uh, shaping out the, the same AP poll uh, when it drops next week. But for Michigan State, what a phenomenal game. Uh, Kohler off the bench, I thought was the biggest bright spot for Michigan State. What he was able to do when he came in and do, I mean, overall, he played great. But he did great on Hunter Dickinson, who is a man amongst boys once again. Obviously, one of the most hated man, hated guys in college basketball, a polarizing man, all this stuff. Guy can hoop. Nobody's disagreeing with that. That's just a blanket statement. 28-12 and 12 from him. Um, true domination. Played 35 minutes. Played the most among starters. So uh, the game kind of went similar to how you thought it was going to go Hunter Dickinson-wise. The rest of it, though, Michigan State, if they had a couple outside shooters, this is a completely different ball game, and we might see some different records right here. Um, but, yeah, Kansas, there's just not a lot of – this This Kansas roster is similar to how I see the Ohio State football roster in, like, how are all these guys on the same team? How are you bringing Forey Badunga and A.J. Store and David Coit all off the bench? Like, how do you do that? That makes no sense to me. But they're all on the same team. Now it's about continuity, and I feel like there's not that. Like, it's not like bad body language, but it feels like none of these guys necessarily click well. And Bill Self, top three coach undeniably in college basketball right now, it'll figure itself out. Um, but, yeah, I mean, for the, for the starting lineup, like, this starting lineup ends up shooting not great from three. 0 for 3 from Dewan, 0 for 3 from Zeke Mayo, which that'll change. Um, Hunter hit one, and then Ryland Griffin was two for six. So there's just not a lot of continuity. That's kind of like the, the end of the, the story there. I mean, Kansas led by six at half, and it didn't even feel like it didn't. It felt like it was tight. Like Michigan State played hard. Played in this game, and if they had some outside shooting, they would have been right there with them. They hit one, uh, they hit three threes across their entire roster for that game. Shot 12.5% from three. Um, while Kansas shot 29.4%, which is fine, but uh, obviously that's got to step up a little bit. Um, I mean, Michigan State was able to hit their free throws, all this different stuff. Frankie Fiddler played a great game, 15 points for him. Um, Jeremy Fears has got to step up, in my opinion. Uh, he was three for eight, nine points, six assists. That's a fine game. But when it's a game like this, and I don't, I don't think DeJuan Harris is a great guard. And if that's who he's trying to cook, like, I don't know. I, I was, I was very pleased with what I saw at Michigan State, and I think they're going to be a really good team all year. Um, and it's only up from here. There's obviously some veteran pieces on this team, and um, I think they're deeper than people give them credit for. Um, some good good minutes from a, a few different guys off that bench. But for Kansas, as of right now, not the number one team in the country. That's not a bold statement at all. Um, but that's just kind of a blanket statement that I think um, feels like kind of a popular opinion right now. So uh, Kansas gets out with the win. Uh, Hunter Dickinson, the man amongst boys, and that's kind of the story of the game. Moving on to the nightcap. So... Sonic Blockbuster game, the 19 rank, 19th ranked Kentucky Wildcats and the number six ranked Blue Devils out of Duke. What a phenomenal game this was. 
I will be all over the place because I'm just going to share my instant thoughts, my reactions, and and like I've not listened to many reactions. I tried to listen to a couple, um, but like this is all just my exact thoughts off this game. I couldn't be more proud of a team. Uh, just this team was down nine points at halftime, and wins the second half, forty to twenty six. The defensive effort given in that second half. There were two different occasions. The final board that Otega Oe got uh, with like five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever it was, that board, and then there was one earlier in the game that's going to go unnoticed and you won't really see it much on the stat sheet or anything. It was Malawash, and I don't remember if BG was in or if Amari was in, but somebody was like on the opposite side. And it's Otega versus Common Malawash. And if you don't know who Malawash is, he's the seven foot two NBA lottery pick uh, that Duke has. And Otega was able to tip it a couple times all out effort and ends up getting that. And that's just like one minute play that he was able to do. Uh, Otega Owe was phenomenal all night. 15 points. Obviously, he didn't light up the stat sheet, but just the little things he was able to do, uh, he, he was just incredible. And he had the big steal on Cooper, uh, second to last possession. So uh, hit the hit the free throws in the clutch. And, man, yeah, just the defensive effort this whole second half uh, was amazing. And the most important thing for me is the takeaway – that Jackson Robinson, who will probably end up being the best player for this Kentucky team, he had one point, and we won this game. Um, just being able to do that with him not necessarily showing up. I mean, he, just him being on the court is such an important thing because he, he just pulls so many guys his way because he's such an elite player. But um, just having him out there was very important. But, like, defensively, he, he did really solid. Um, had a couple blocks. So, like, he wasn't there, but he was still a very important piece. Uh, but with him scoring one point, I mean, you can't ask for, for much more. And so, like, for him to have one point, Kobe Bray had to miss two threes. Uh, he only hit two threes. He was two for four. But, um, like, those guys aren't going to play that bad in many times ever. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just, like, this team effort was absolutely incredible. And I hate to do, like, the, the comparisons because uh, barring any – insane statements from John Calipari. I'll forever love the guy. But this is there's no chance that John Calipari led Kentucky team is winning this game. Down nine and a half. I still had a ton of hope and hope and Pope. And it was exactly what happened. Um it was just phenomenal. Andrew Carr, I like you can't even put into words how amazing his game was. Uh played thirty minutes, seventeen points, led the team in scoring and he had the biggest plays there down the stretch. With the one he gets, uh, Milo Wash up in the air, goes into his chest, gets fouled, uh, gets the and one, hit threes when needed. Um, he was just absolutely phenomenal all night. And, uh, yeah, this it, it was the Andrew Carr that we were hoping to get. Um, Amari played a great game, I thought. Um, Lamont, he, he, he did things when it was necessary. He could go out there and you wouldn't notice a few things, but right when you needed something, Lamont Butler was right there to give you exactly what the team needed. And whether it was a steal, a shot, a certain pass, like anything, it was just incredible. Uh, this Kentucky team, there's just, there's an identity to them. And that's something that these past few years we hadn't had. And like, we didn't shy away. Like we started missing some shots. We started off five for five from three, start missing a couple, hit seven threes in the first half, I think. And then three in the second. Uh, I mean, like there's just, there's an identity and getting out and running, getting transition buckets. And, and Duke did a phenomenal job stopping us in transition. Um, so I, big props to John Shire and, and that whole coaching staff for being able to stop that. But um, I, th I thought it was an incredible game plan out of them, uh, not allowing a ton of runs and exactly what we were trying to do. But uh, we were able to battle back and win. And, and at halftime, my takeaway at half was that Jasper Johnson's in the world – the Caden Lewis's of the world, uh, these like shifty guards and good ball handlers. And those guys are going to make such a difference in this offense because this offense is obviously really, really good. Great shooting team. Um, all this different stuff that this offense is great at. But the one thing this offense doesn't have, which I thought it was going to be Jackson Robinson, is somebody that can just go one on one, beat their man, get to the bucket and, and either draw a foul or, or get a bucket when it's needed. We did not have that in the last few minutes of the first half. That was very, very evident. Um, and, yeah, that, that's that's why, I like, those Jasper-type recruits are really going to be 
something special. I mean, they're, they're going to be able to do wonderful things for this team. As for Duke, obviously, I don't think anybody's giving up on them at all. But if you had any glimpse of, like, disappointment, do not. This is a – this Kentucky team is legit. Really good team. Uh, and Duke's going to be fine. They're, they're probably going to run the table, and they're going to win the ACC. Malawash obviously battled some injuries there uh, towards the end. He's such an important piece for them. And without him, I mean, it was Malik Brown that came in. They're just not super deep, which Kentucky is, playing uh, playing 10 guys for Kentucky and only uh, set, or it's only eight for Duke. But, I mean, Gillis just played spot minutes. And then Sion, uh he went out with a shoulder injury. So, um, But, yeah, for Duke, obviously, the number one pick, Cooper Flagg, he's absolutely incredible. Uh, 26 points, 12 boards. And I, I heard some people, I think Jay Williams was the one I, I had heard first say it, that like that ball's got to be in Proctor's hands there at the end, blah, blah, blah. I think you're absolutely insane if you don't give it to him. He had cooked the entire night, ISO, 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 balled the all night. And Conkin Nipple in the first half was doing the same thing. Second half, he only had two points. But that's got to be in Cooper, Cooper's hands right there. Obviously, he's 17 years old. It's a bright lights moment. He's not going to be perfect, but... The Kentucky stepped up and, and played great defense on him and was able to rip it from him. So, uh, obviously, Duke missed some open shots, and they're going to fall. Um, but Kentucky really did a great job. I mean, like, the second half, 26 points, you don't get that off of just, like, missing a couple shots. Like, Kentucky was running guys off the line, forcing tough shots, getting out defensive boards and, and not allowing putbacks a lot, um, and really took advantage when Milo Lush was out of the game. So, it was a phenomenal game, I thought. Um just great execution of everything game plan wise. And it feels so good to not have to uh, defend a coach that, you know, goes into halftime and doesn't make an adjustment. So for Mark Pope to go in down nine at half, come out with the confidence uh, in his guys and, and the, the guys having confidence in Pope, it was just amazing to see. And I mean, that I, I've, there's a billion thoughts on this game. I don't want to bore you if you're not a Kentucky fan, so uh, I might do an extended uh, version or something, but that's kind of my, my instant reaction and, and thoughts on the game. And I mean, first 3 no starts since 2016. I mean, we, we hadn't been winning these classics, and Mark Pope gets it done in his first year against a, uh, a phenomenal Duke team. And I mean, this Duke team is going to be very, very good. Um, one shock that I had mentioned it, I think, last week, I was uh, hoping Caleb Foster wasn't going to have a Caleb Foster game of last year where he just went off from three. Uh, he did go 0 for 4. That's not going to happen again. Um, so, yeah, for, for Kentucky to get this win, it's just it, – there's no words to describe. Like, this fan base is legitimately rejuvenated and completely – I'm still on a high right now. Um, and the Go Big Blue chance in State Farm Arena after the game and, and the Who's in the House Tonight chance in State Farm Arena, like, it was – it was literally a movie and a night that I will never forget. And being there in person for it was just absolutely incredible. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the Champions Classic recap. But that's To me, this feels like it's always the first time uh, that the sports world really pays attention. They're like, oh, yeah, college basketball is back. But, uh, yeah, this one definitely delivered. What a, what a classic we got. Um, other than that, I do want to mention, I did go to the uh, Tennessee, number 12 Tennessee at Louisville game uh, this past Saturday. For Louisville fans, I'll just say this. Chill out. There's a lot of naysayers within the fan base and warriors. Louisville will be completely fine. One, the ACC is not super strong. Two, this is the Tennessee Volunteers. This is Rick Barnes. As a Kentucky fan, I know Tennessee being scheduled as your second game. or Yeah, yeah, second game as a, like, with a new coach, new players, everything. Not a good idea. I mean, it's, it's cool to, like, get the environment and everything uh, and kind of feel like it's back, but scheduling that is a death wish. Tennessee's defense, as long as Rick Barnes is there, is going to be phenomenal, and that's exactly what happened. And even Ziegler, I mean, he didn't play a great game. He had 11 turnovers, but he was hitting shots he will never hit again. He had one of the best offensive shooting games I've ever seen, and ten like, Louisville's going to be fine. Tennessee's a good basketball team, and, um, yeah, I mean – I've, I just feel like Louisville fed into exactly what Tennessee wanted to do and where they were forcing three-pointers and, and could not hit a, hit the broadside of a barn. So I think Louisville's going to be completely fine. 
that, that, that's my, my takeaway. Louisville's going to be fine. Um, don't jump off the ship yet. Kelsey's a great coach. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was, I mean, it was a good test, but like, like I said, it's a death wish. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, between Chaz Lanier, Zakai Ziegler, um, everybody was hitting shots when they needed it. And it, it's a new Tennessee team, but it's a good Tennessee team. And, um, you're just kind of asking for, for a loss when you schedule them that early with a new coach and everything. So, uh, but yeah, both teams will be solid. And, um, I mean, Louisville's got a legit chance to be like the third best team in the ACC behind uh, Duke and UNC. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of my takeaways. As for college football, the main takeaway from week 11 was, I mean, I'll, I'll do uh, another another uh, podcast or whatever, but uh, main takeaways, LSU, I don't know what they've done, but they have somehow, like, they've been captured by somebody and they will not, they will never, as long as, long as the season goes, They'll never stop a running quarterback. And it makes absolutely no sense. This is the entire game plan going into this game. Just like, all right, we'll stop Jalen Milrow. It feels like when he starts to run, that the entire program shuts down. And they like, they're like, this this can't be legal. There's no way you're allowed to run. And Jalen Milrow did it and on and on and on and on. And they got crapped on. But the issue with that is. Two SEC losses for them. They have a, a, a tough one in the swamp this week. But there's this weird scenario now where um, there's like six different teams that can go 10-2 uh, overall. Obviously, they're going to have three losses overall with the USC loss as well. But it's two in conference. And if they just went out from here, they'll be in the SEC championship. It's crazy. It's because these massive mega conferences are a thing. All these people don't play each other. And that's how the tiebreakers will end up. And if all these teams end up finishing 10-2, and two, which would happen based on, I think the only upset that would have to happen is Texas A&M beating Texas, I think. That'd be the only upset that's needed. And if all of this happens, LSU's in the SEC Championship, I think against Texas A&M, which is crazy. Because you're going to have to give at-large bids to Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, um, just all these different teams. Like, it, it's just it, unreal to me. But... Moving on from that, week 12, we've got some awesome games lined up. Tennessee at Georgia is the headliner. 7.30, night game. Um, that one's going to be awesome. This is obviously a – if Georgia loses, they're out. If Tennessee loses, they're still in. Got to win a couple more games. But um, literally another playoff eliminator, and it's awesome because November football just means a whole lot more now. Um, I think Georgia goes in there and rolls. You'll see my score prediction uh, later on, but – Playing in Athens and with Georgia's backs against the wall. Carson Beck's obviously played terrible. Um, I guess that's another takeaway. That Ole Miss, huge victory over Georgia. Uh, this is just kind of an awful off-the-wall type of thing, just whatever pops in my head. But Carson Beck's not been great. If he just plays an okay game, I think Georgia rolls Tennessee, uh, and Tennessee's not going to be able to score with them. So uh, that's a huge game. I would say Utah at Colorado could get interesting, just the defense. Um, I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. If you bet, take the under. Um, Virginia at Notre Dame is interesting. Virginia's looked a whole lot better these last couple weeks. Nebraska at USC. If you haven't seen, go check out the Jump Twitter. Uh, USC, beautiful uniforms this week. Um, Oregon at Wisconsin. This one is kind of noted just because this is, I mean, Oregon's last true test. So uh, I think that one's super interesting. I mean, if they give out this one. Uh, and get out of there with a win, then I think they're just going to continue to roll. And then uh, Missouri at South Carolina. Missouri's not good, but if they somehow win this game, they're going to end up being right there in the play I'll talk to. So, uh, sadly, I hope I hope South Carolina just absolutely rolls them. Uh, but that's some of the games to watch this week. And uh, as for the Heisman race, it, it doesn't change much. It's still the core four. And if you want to see the, the five through ten, go check out the social medias. Um, they'll be at the end of the video, as always. But I now moved Ashton Genty to two, Travis Hunter to one. Um, so that's the first change in a little bit. So it's Travis Hunter, Ashton Genty, Cam Ward, and Dylan Gabriel. And I think that's the four. Uh, and it's not really debatable in my mind, I don't think. Um, but the rest of them, go check them out on the social media, and, and you'll see the top ten that I have. Uh, I think that's it. Quick little video, quick little podcast. Um, 
but I wanted to get on here and talk and give like a little instant reaction. So um, now I need to go catch up on some sleep, driving all day. So um, yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It's all all appreciated, and I thank you all uh, very much. So enjoy the college basketball the rest of this week. Enjoy the college bas er, basketball. You have a couple of big games this weekend to look forward to, and then college football, some of those games I just mentioned. So enjoy all of the college sports this upcoming week and weekend. And thank you. Have a great rest of the week, and peace.